There are things I wish I knew then that I know now. And so I want to share them with you today. My name is Mercia Shonek, and I'm always excited to share with you what the Lord lays on my heart. There are three basics to experiencing God in all his fullness and all his glory. Number one, build a relationship with God. Have intimacy with God. And how do we do that? We do that by getting to know that he loves us and that he wants to spend time with us and that he doesn't get fed up every time we make a mistake, he walks away. He's always there. He's interested in us. You see, God knows us intimately because he formed us before we were placed in our mother's womb. But God wants you to know him as intimately as he knows you. And so draw close to God. John 3 verse 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It goes on to say, but God did not, and God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is huge. This is how much he loved us, that he sent his only son. He said, son, die for my people. I want you to reconcile them back to me. I want to have relationship with them again, the way I had in the garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. I want you to reconcile them to me so that we can fellowship. I can speak to them and they will speak to me. And this is exactly what Jesus did on the cross. He paid a high price so that we could be reconciled to the Father. And he took upon his body all of our sins, sickness, shame, guilt, nailed it to the cross once and for all. And we now come boldly into the throne room of grace. And here we find grace and mercy to help in time of need. I love what John 16, 27 says, for the father himself loves you. This is what Jesus tells us. Because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. This is a huge verse as well. The father loves us. In Romans 5 verse 8 it says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Before we made the decision to receive him as Savior, to come to salvation, Jesus died for us. And so all of our sin, guilt, and shame is nailed to the cross, past, present, and future. And we always have access to the Father. Number two, God wants to speak to you and he wants you to hear him. For years, I wondered if God was even there when I prayed. For years, I wondered if God even listened to my prayers and if he was willing to answer me. I always thought that he was so done with the mistakes that I've made, the wrong choices, the things that I did. God was always present. He's always pursuing us. Doesn't matter how far we are from him, he pursues us. And I remember in the beginning, I came to know the Lord as Savior. And I was so, so excited about going to spend time in the secret place. Because that's what I heard all the time when I went to church. And I'd go in there with my Bible and the commitment to, to hear his voice. And for a few months, I went in there every day, early in the morning before my family got up. I would be there trying to hear from God. And I came away disappointed. I thought, but God's not here. He's not responding. I don't feel anything when I pray. When I read the word, it doesn't make sense to me. And I think after two months, I quit. I went to church years and I'd listened to the word, but I stopped going into that secret place because I felt like I just wasted my time. But I remember not long after that, I went into this particular room where I used to spend my quiet time. 
I went to fetch something in the room and as I walked out, I heard a voice that said to me, Mersha, I miss my time with you. And I looked back and I realized there's nobody here and it came to my attention that this was God telling me he's always been here. He's always been listening to me and he'd enjoyed our time together. And from that day, I made the decision, I'm going back there. I'm going to gonna spend time in the secret place. And I love spending time in the secret place. I got to know God. And so I want to tell you that maybe you out there and you always feel like, you know, God doesn't listen to you. He listens. We are just not taking the time to hear him. John 10 verse 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and another's they will not follow. You see, he hears us. And we hear him. If you will just stop listening to all the other voices and take time to get to know his voice. And we get to know his voice by knowing his word. In Matthew 21, 22, it says, whatever things you ask in prayer, believe you will receive. And so this is what we do when we go boldly into the throne room of grace. We speak to God and we are then expecting that he will answer and that we will receive. John 16 verse 24 says, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. You see, this is God's desire. That when we ask and we are expectant and we receive them, we are full of joy. We love receiving things and God knows that about us. And he wants to answer you. You have to just believe. The third thing I want you to know is that you must spend time in the word of God. Because his word is his will. And he speaks through his word. And this was the big thing that changed my life. Just spending time in the word and knowing the word of God. I remember I had a friend I talk about her a lot. Her name was Karen. And we worked together. And man, Karen knew the word of God. And she especially knew the Psalms. Karen spent a lot of time in the word of God. And especially the Psalms. And so she would always, whenever we got together or pray about anything, Karen had a psalm. <laughs> and I remember there was a time I was really irritated that Karen always had a psalm and I came in there with not even a scripture. And I remember complaining to the Lord, Lord, give me also a psalm, man. <laughs> and I heard so clearly, Mercia, Karen spends time in the psalms. That's why she knows the psalms. And it hit me that I needed to spend time in the word. I needed to meditate on the word. And I needed to know the word of God. So that that will also bubble up in me whenever we are together. And I started spending time of the, in the word. And the word really washed me and it cleansed me. And there was the more of a desire to spend time in the secret place and more of a desire to want to hear God and God's voice alone. Proverbs 4 verse 20 to 22 says, My son, my daughter, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Matthew 4 verse 4 says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then Romans 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Without hearing the word of God, you won't develop your faith. So the word is important. And then lastly, James 1 verse 22 says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. My friend, God loves you and God wants to have a relationship with you. He wants you to hear his voice and he wants you to spend time in his word so that you hear clearly from him. And so let me pray for us. Lord, we just welcome you into our hearts and into our lives.
And Lord, we want to honor you. Give me a desire to be more intimate with you. Give me a desire to spend more time in your word. Give me a desire, Lord Jesus, just to honor you with my life. I thank you that you are a good God, you are a merciful God, you are a gracious God. I thank you that you are for me and not against me. Help me to get to know you more intimately and help me to ask you for things and expect to receive so that my joy may be full. Thank you that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Thank you that I'm washed, I'm cleansed. The blood has cleansed me. And it gives me opportunity to enter boldly into your throne room of grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I trust that this word has encouraged you today. And so I'm going to ask you for a big favor. Won't you like, subscribe and leave me a comment. Share this video with your friends and encourage them to subscribe as well. And I'm going to leave some of the scriptures in the description box for you so that you can meditate and, and read them again and apply it to your life and not only be a hearer of the word, but a doer as well. I'm going to give you details of my book called The Journey with the King. Um, I'm going to give you details of my monthly devotional that I'll be sending out if you're interested in that. Please won't you send me your leave your email address in the comment section so that I can get that to you. And uh, yeah, just be blessed and encouraged and know that God loves you and that he desires to spend more time with you in Jesus name. Have a really great day.